Brain of Britain, the nationwide general knowledge contest, chaired by Russell Davis. Thank you, thank you. That's a lovely welcome. Hello from the Radio Theatre in London, where we're about to meet another four contenders hoping to progress towards the title of Brain of Britain 2023. In half an hour or so, we'll have at least one more name to add to our list of semi-finalists for later in the year. I say at least one more because in Brain of Britain you can win through as a runner-up if things go your way. I'll explain a bit more about that as the series goes on. We we'll lose no time in meeting our four contenders today. My name's Atalanta Beaumont. I'm a retired psychotherapist from Surrey. Hello, I'm Dave Cowan. I'm a retired information systems architect from Swansea. Hello, my name's John Essling. I'm a hedge layer from Suffolk. Hello, I'm Emma Goodrich Hobson, an NHS worker from Woodbridge in Suffolk. Welcome all of you and the very best of luck. You all know the rules, I'm sure. You continue to get questions until you get one wrong or can't answer, in which case it can be picked up by one of the others. And remember, if you get five correct answers in a row, you earn a sixth bonus point. It's tough to achieve, which is why you get the reward. But we do usually manage several fives in a row every series, and it's, it's very nice when it happens. Fingers poised then, and we start the first round today with you, Atalanta Beaumont. In flowering plants, what's the name of the part of a stamen that produces and contains pollen? Uh, the anther. The anther is right, yes. Macronutrients, also known as macros, are nutrients that the body uses in relatively large amounts. Can you name the three main macronutrients? Carbohydrate, protein, fat. That's right, exactly. In June 2019, Mette Frederiksen became Prime Minister of which European country, the youngest person ever to achieve the office in that country? Finland? No. Dave Cowan? Denmark. Is the right answer. And it's your question. In rugby union, the Dave Gallagher Trophy is contested between which two countries? New Zealand and South Africa? No, I'm afraid not. Emma Goodrich Hobson. Australia and New Zealand? No, but worth a guess. John Essling. England and South Africa. No. All these are possible combinations. Atalanta Beaumont. New Zealand and England. No, near Miss France and New Zealand. It oh. is actually. It's named after Dave Gallagher, the all black captain who was killed in Belgium during World War I. John Essling, how many pillars of faith must adherents follow in the Islamic religion? Five. Yes. Which British cathedral was destroyed on the night of 14th of November 1940 when explosives and firebombs were dropped on its city? Coventry. Yes. The designs of which architect include the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao, the Walt Disney Concert Hall in Los Angeles, the Louis Vuitton Foundation Building in Paris, and the Pop Culture Museum in Seattle, Washington, all of them sculptural buildings noted for interleaved curved surfaces? Frank Geary. Yes, born in Toronto in 1929. In which war did the first sinking of an enemy ship by a submarine take place? American Civil War. That's the right answer. When a Confederate submarine sank the USS Housatonic in Charleston Harbor. There are two moons in the solar system that are larger than the planet Mercury. One is a satellite of Jupiter, the other of Saturn. Can you name them both? Titan and Ganymede is the right answer, and the fifth in a row. Well done. There you are. We only have to mention it, and it happens. Well done. Emma Goodrich Hobson, Easter Island, thousands of miles off the coast of Chile, is known all over the world because of its moai. What are the moai? Big stone carved heads. That's right, giant stone heads. In chemistry, what's the name given to a substance that consists of two or more elements chemically combined? A compound. A compound, yes. 
The animal, sometimes known as the pygmy chimpanzee, began to be recognized as a separate species almost 100 years ago, but only received its modern name in 1954. By what name is it now known? Pass. OK. John Esling, no? The bonobo? Yes, it is the bonobo. The name thought to be a misspelling of the Congolese town of Belobo, where some early examples of the creature were rounded up. And that's the end of the first round of the contest, and everyone has scored, which is good. Dave Cowan has won, Emma Goodrich Hobson and Atalanta Beaumont two apiece. John Esling, seven. Right, music for you, Atalanta Bowland, from the recent release of Andrea Bocelli's One Night in Central Park. Here, the Italian tenor is joined by the Welsh bass baritone, Brintervo, performing Bizet's Au Fond du Temple Saint, after which I'd like you to name the opera it's from. The Pearl Singers? No. <laughs> Dave Cowan? The Pearl Fishers. The Pearl Fishers, yes. I'm sorry, I can't give you that. And it's your turn, David Cowan. The Wreck of the Andes is a popular tourist attraction off the coast of which Caribbean island? Jamaica? No. Atalanta Bowman? Barbados? No. Good to have a go, though. John Esling? Cuba? No. Any more? Yes, Emma Goodrich Hobbs. St. Lucia? No, it's Antigua. The Andes was a three-masted steel merchant ship that caught fire and sank in 1905. John Essling now. Which 20th century French painter and sculptor's artwork created from a porcelain urinal and signed with the pseudonym R. Mutt shocked the art world in 1917? Marcel Duchamp. Yes. With more than 200 million copies in circulation every year, which retail company's catalogue once surpassed the Bible, the Quran, and the Harry Potter series to earn the title of the world's most printed book? Is it Sears Roebuck? It isn't, I'm afraid. No, Atalanta Beaumont? Ikea? Yes, or Ikea, as the ads tell us to pronounce it now. That's the one. However, in 2020, the company discontinued the printed catalogue as shoppers moved increasingly online, so you can't get this vast thing anymore. Emma Goodrich Hobson. In children's fiction, the scar on Harry Potter's head is in the shape of what? A lightning bolt. It is. Which metal is the best conductor of electricity? Tungsten. No. Dave Cowan? Copper. No. Atalanta Bowman? Steel. No. John? Lithium. No. No. This surprised me too. It's silver. Mm. Silver also has the highest thermal conductivity and reflectivity of any metal. And that's the end of the second round. Scores are still pretty close. Dave Cowan, two. Atalanta Bowman and Emma Goodrich Hobson, three apiece. And John Essling, eight. Yes, Now, at a latter moment, 2023 marks the centenary year of the British author Elizabeth Jane Howard, best known for her series of novels chronicling which aristocratic family, beginning with her book The Light Years. The Cazalets. Yes, she was married to Sir Kingsley Amis latterly, and a formidable combination they were. Where in the human body will you find the hypothalamus? The brain. Yes. Listeners to the radio shipping forecast will be familiar with the sea areas North Utsira and South Utsira. Can you spell Utsira? No. <laughs> <laughs> you deserve a mark for honesty, that's wonderful. No, but is anybody going to have a go? Dave Cowan. U-T-S-I-R-E. That's right, yes. It's named after an island and municipality on the southwestern tip of Norway. 
Dave Cowan, your turn to celebrate this year's 75th anniversary of HMT Windrush arriving at Tilbury Docks in 1948. The Windrush 75 network compiled a top 20 playlist which showcases the huge contribution made to UK music by the Windrush generation, unquote. Here's one of the songs from that playlist. Can you identify the group? Selector. It was the Selector, yes. You heard Three Minute Hero, a hit in 1980 by the ska band from Coventry. Which celebrated person who died in the year 1900 had the three middle names Fingal or Flaherty Wills? Oscar Wilde. Yes. From 2015 to 2020, Venki Ramakrishnan was president of which British institution? The Royal Society? Yes, right answer. The Gold Roman Bowl is the prize awarded to the overall winners of which annual British sporting event? Henley Regatta? No. Anybody going to have a guess? Yes, John Essling. The Oxford Cambridge Boat Race? No. Nobody else. No. Water is right. The Gold Roman Bowl is the prize awarded to the Round the Island Yachting Race winner. The island in question being the Isle of Wight. John Essling, which insect, demonised in old blues songs named after it, was responsible for the devastation of the cotton crop in the southern states of America from the beginning of the 20th century onward? The boll weevil. That's the one. Only with the boll weevil eradication programme of 1978 did it really come under control. Which former world heavyweight boxing champion once offered a zoo attendant $10,000 to let him fight a gorilla? It's got to be Muhammad Ali. No. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't. Emma Goodrich Thompson. Mike Tyson? It was Mike Tyson. <laughs> the attendant declined. We're not sure about the gorilla. <laughs> Tyson had apparently watched a big silverback male bullying some smaller gorillas and had an urge to teach it a lesson. Emma Goodrich Hobson's turn. What are the opening four words of W.H. Auden's poem, Funeral Blues? Stop all the clocks. Yes, the poem experienced renewed popularity in a big way after being read in the 1994 film Four Weddings and a Funeral. The first winning designer to take the Dress of the Year Award died in 2023. The child of parents from Welsh mining families, she married the grandson of the Irish baritone Harry Plunkett Green. What was her name? Vivian Westwood? No. Dave Carr? Mary Quant. Dame Mary Quant is the right answer, yes. And that brings us to the end of another round. Emma Goodrich Hobson and at Atalanta Bowment, five each. Dave Cowan, seven. John Essling, now nine. <laughs> so we've reached the point in the quiz where we can let our contenders sit back for a few minutes and relax. <laughs> I'm going to take a pair of questions from the overflowing mailbag of question ideas listeners have sent us over the past year or so. Our brains will collaborate on these and work as a quiz team, a scenario with which most of them are no doubt quite familiar. Challenging the brains today is Richard McPhail in Bristol, who's come up with two intriguing but entirely unrelated questions. If you can't deal adequately with Mr McPhail's questions, he'll win himself a book voucher prize. So get ready to throw all your thoughts into the pot. Here's his first question. On the 30th of January, 1774, Captain Cook's ship Resolution was approaching Antarctica. It sailed as far south as it could go, and the story goes that at that point a young midshipman climbed onto the bowsprit just before the ship came around and headed back north. He thus claimed to be the person who had ventured furthest south of any human being to that date. He was later immortalized by having a city named after him in a place very far from those events. Who was he? Very far from well, that's what I'm thinking. Is it someone? Is it somewhere here? I, I suspect it's somewhere here. But I just, I'm trying to think of southern hemisphere because it's very far from the. You don't get the so it's got to be to somewhere in cities in England. No, you don't really, do you? Um, or something like Canada or something like that. You know. I don't know. I can't. 
Vancouver's name better than the British. It's, it's not Vancouver. Captain Vancouver, so. It's not. No, it's not. Go for it. Mm, we don't really know. Mm, we don't. Mm. Seattle, something like that. Have a go. Oh, sorry, Seattle. No. His name was George Vancouver. <laughs> 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 He was later to command his own expeditions and he explored oh, and surveyed yes. the coast of British Columbia, among oh, other Mike. places, leading to the city on the Pacific coast being named for him in 1886, George oh, Vancouver. Oh, Richard's second question is on a completely different theme you'll be glad to know, and I hope some of you are Beatles fans because that's what it's about. One of John Lennon's biggest hits after the breakup of the Beatles was Imagine, and that word is the first word of the first verse of the song. But there's a Beatles song, too, in which Lennon sings the word imagine at the very beginning of the first verse. Can you name it? And to save you spending about a fortnight singing every possible song in the Beatles catalogue, I'll give you the clue that it was a B-side to a number one hit. Maybe Eleanor Rigby? No, that's the Alison Marines, the B-side of that. Oh. Some strawberry fields. The first one of that is Let Me Take You Down. Yeah. Uh, Pick a B side. So try I, I am the Wolvers. That was it. Okay. <laughs> we'll try I am, I am the Wolvers. No, it's I'll get you the B side of She Loves You, oh. which after a few opening O years starts with Lennon, Lennon singing, Imagine I'm in love with you. <laughs> well, that's one we'd all forgotten, I think. But thank you, Richard. You well and truly stumped our brains with those questions, and your prize. We'll be with you very shortly. Very well done. And by a brain of Britain tradition, our audience here in the Radio Theatre is also about to reward you with this unimaginably riotous round of applause. <laughs> it's back to the rivalry of the heat with the scores tantalisingly close. Fingers back on buttons, please. And the next round starts with you again at Atalanta Beaumont. In December 1919, who became the first female MP to take her seat in the House of Commons? Nancy Astor. Yes. The long-running BBC children's TV series Blue Peter is known for introducing a variety of pets down the years. What kind of animal were Frida, Maggie, Jim and George? Tortoises. Yes, they were. Which character portrayed in books and on TV and film was based on a real-life Yorkshire-based vet named Donald Sinclair? Jim Harriet? Mm, no. Dave Cowan? Siegfried Farnan. That is the answer. Not James Harriet. Donald Sinclair was the boss of Alf White, yeah. who wrote under the name James Harriet. David Cowan, on Saturday the 6th of May 2022, who became the first woman to carry the sword of state, a symbol of the new king's authority, during Charles III's coronation procession at Westminster Abbey? Penny Mordaunt. And it was the leader of the House of Commons and Lord President of the Privy Council. It is still possible in our own day to be infected by the plague, once known as the Black Death. And there are three types of plague of which bubonic is one. Can you name either of the other two? Rheumatic? No, sorry, no. John Esley? Pneumonic. Is right. Yeah. Pneumonic is the most dangerous because it can be spread by coughing, but luckily it's the rarest of the three. The other one is septicemic. Back to you then, John Essling, and there's a clip for you to listen to. In 2019, the BBC World Service launched a special podcast series marking the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing. 13 Minutes to the Moon details the final phase of the descent to the lunar surface and the months and years that led up to those extraordinary moments. After you've heard the start of episode seven, The Third Man, a question will follow. Eagle, you still, will you see you on a over? In orbit, 60 miles above the moon, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin are beginning preparations for their descent to the lunar surface. They're on board Eagle, the lunar module which is just about to separate from the command module, Columbia. Roger, Eagle, turn back. Roger, how does it look? Eagle, Eagle has wings. Roger. Looking good. And the question is, 
Who was the third man, the astronaut who remained on Columbia while his crewmates landed on the surface? Michael Collins. Michael Collins is right. The creations of which writer and illustrator who died in 2022 include When the Wind Blows, about a nuclear catastrophe, and Ethel and Ernest about the lives of his parents in the changing world of post-war Britain. Raymond Briggs. Yes, also known for The Snowman. Although his works are often described as children's books, Briggs always denied there were any such thing. Which TV presenter and journalist was the winner of the main event in the European Poker Tour in both 2006 and 2014? Victoria Corrin Mitchell. Yes, the right answer. In 1957, which musician released Such Sweet Thunder, an album inspired by Shakespeare, with each of the 11 tracks directly linked to a specific Shakespearean character? Miles Davis? No. Yes, Atalanta Boant. Edward Elgar? No. Yes, Dave Cowan. Duke Ellington? Correct answer. Well done. <laughs> yes, it includes... <laughs> the album includes Sonnet to Hank Sank, Lady Mac and the Star-Crossed Lovers. Emma Goodrich Hobson, your turn. The Owl Thing, its anglicised name, is the Parliament, one of the oldest in the world, of which country? Iceland. Yes, the modern Owl Thing was founded in 1845, but it was essentially a, a remodelling of an assembly that's at least 1,100 years old. 2023 sees the release of Unnatural Death, the 27th book by American crime writer Patricia Cornwell, in a series of stories involving which medical examiner? K. Scarpetta. That's the name. What name is given to the layer of the Earth's atmosphere lying above the stratosphere and below the thermosphere? The ionosphere. No. Any guesses at this, Dave Cowan? The troposphere. No. Any more spheres? I don't know how many there are, to be honest. John, John Nestling. Stratosphere? No. It's the mesosphere. The mesosphere starts at about 30 miles up, stretching to around 50 miles. End of another round. These scores are getting more and more interesting all the time. Atalanta Beaumont and Emma Goodridge Hobson have seven each. Dave Cowan, 10. John Nestling, 13. <laughs> Nobody's out of reach. But I have to tell you, this is the final round of the contest. So go for everything. Atalanta Beaumont, which woman holds the most Wimbledon tennis singles titles? Martina Navratilova. Yes, her nine singles titles spanning three decades make her the most successful woman in Wimbledon's singles history. What name containing that of a chemical element links both the dominant style of handwriting used in the 18th and 19th centuries and a popular typeface designed by Frederick Gaudi and released in 1901? Italic? No. Emma Goodrich Hobson. Copper plate? Copper plate, yes, that's the right answer. Dave Cowan, the Atacama is often regarded as the world's driest true desert receiving less precipitation than any other non-polar desert. In which continent is it located? South America. South America, that's precise, yes, on the coast of Chile. What power tool shares its name with an uncompromising genre of rap music associated with Chicago and Brixton? Drill. Drill is right, yes. In August 1992, Eric Cantona became the first footballer to score a Premier League hat-trick. For which club? Manchester United. No. John Esling. Leeds United. It was at that stage Leeds United. Cantona joined Manchester United later that year. John Esling, we come to you. Which line of poetry by the black American poet Paul Lawrence Dunbar became familiar when later used by the writer Maya Angelou as the title of her autobiography. I know why the caged bird sings. Exactly right. It appears in Dunbar's poem, Sympathy. Who retired as Team GB's most successful Olympian in 2022 after winning a total of seven golds and two silvers? Steve Redgrave? 
No. Dave Cowan? Jason Kenny. Sir Jason Kenny is right, the cyclist. <laughs> His wife, Laura Kenny, who was also made a dame in 2022, is the joint most decorated female athlete for Team GB with five golds and one silver. Emma Goodrich Hobson, music for you. In May 2023, the BBC reported that the Eurovision Song Contest in Liverpool was the most watched final in the history of the competition. Here's Tattoo, the winning song for Sweden, after which I'd simply like you to name the artist. Violence playing and the angels crying When the stars are lined and I'll be there No one will care about the love Cause all I want is to be loved And all I care about is you It's stuck on me like I got to No one will care about the love Lorraine Yes, the singer from Stockholm, who'd had the experience of winning it before in 2012 with the song Euphoria. She thus became the first woman to win it twice. What do birds do when they nidificate? Sing. No. John Esley. Do they wipe their beaks? No. They do that, of course, but that's not it. Atalanta Bowman? Spit. No. <laughs> One more go. Yes, Dave Cowan. Regurgitate food for their young? No. They build nests. Oh. If you think of the French, le nid, N-I-D for nest, nidificate, obviously comes from the Latin. And that's it. Time's up, I'm afraid. Meaning that the final scores in this third heat of Brain of Britain look like this. Atalanta Beaumont, eight points. Emma Goodrich Thompson, nine. Dave Cowan, 13. John Essling, 15. <laughs> So, congratulations to John Esling, whom we'll be meeting in the autumn for the semi-finals. And all may not be over for Dave Cowan either, because our repertoire charge system picks up the top-scoring runners-up across the series and gives them a chance in the semi-finals too. And 13 certainly stands a chance. We'll have a clearer idea later in the series. Warm thanks to you for listening, and please join us next time if you can. Goodbye.